Welcome to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hard-working farmers. We want to share their success stories. And where there are challenges, we will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields. And increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms. On Munda Makeover! Cozy. Hey, Katanana. When do you think is the best time to become a farmer? Ooh, that's a very interesting question. The mm -hmm. best time? Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. Yeah, there's a lot to be considered, but the only way to find out is to just do it. Mm -hmm. This week, we're visiting a farmer who's done just that. Will it pay off? Let's find out. Today, we're in Mansa, Luapula province, and we're visiting 25-year-old Chansa Muntuna. Chansa is rearing fish and is very new to farming. Through support from his parents, Chansa has been given four hectares of land to carry out his fish farming activities. Let's go and meet him. Hello there. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Very excited to be here and so is Kachanana. Tell us yes. about what you're doing on your farm. What I'm doing here is uh, fish farming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm doing both uh, grow out mm -hmm. and uh, seed production. How long have you been doing farming, fish farming? Uh, it's been two years now. Oh. Two years? Yes. Wow, yes. congratulations. Yes. Doing so well and mm. being so young and uh, quite successful at what you're doing so far. Mm. Yes. What are some of the challenges that you've encountered so far? Okay, the first challenge that I've been encountering uh, is uh, mm. the high cost of feed, commercial feed, yes. Yeah. Right. Then away from that, I also have uh, a challenge with uh, predators. So the other challenge is um, water. Mm. Water during this season, the mm. dry season, yes. Mm. When the water levels are very low, the mm. birds will easily attack the fish. I see. Ah. Looking backwards, uh, like even last year, the mm. water didn't drop to this level. Right. Mm. Yeah, so this has to do with uh, climate change for sure. For some of the challenges that you've outlined here, mm. we have a few people that uh, may be able to come with some expert help and remedy some of these challenges. Mm. How would you feel about that? No, it would be great. Yeah, so we're going <laughs> to run off now and we'll be back with that expert help. All right. We'll yeah. see you, Chancellor. All right. All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I was very delighted when I heard that uh, the Munda Makeover team is visiting my farm. Because this is the first time that uh, I've ever uh, received visitors under a big project like this one. Our parents introduced us to agriculture. My father did crops. I got inspired with what he was doing. But eventually, I started falling in love with the fish. And I found it more, more valuable <laughs> than the crops. So I had to, di to divert from crops to fish farming. Yes. Fish farming, like any other farming, starts with seeds. In this case, our seeds are called fingerlings. Come with me. I said come! Chansa has eight fish ponds and is expecting to harvest about 1.8 tons at the end of the season. One of the major challenges he is facing is the state of his ponds. Predators in the form of birds are attacking his fish. Also, the color of the water is a sign that not all is well. I took Chansa to Hopeway's fish hatchery to see the different aspects of fish farming. Hopeway's is an aquaculture production facility based in Luapula province. They provide training and support to fish farmers by supplying quality tilapia fingerlings, sex reversal fingerlings, and promote integrated aquaculture to help farmers improve their income, food, and water security. Integrated aquaculture helps farmers make the most of their water and land resources and improves the flow of income from various sources. 
Helen Chama from Hopeways Fish Hatchery is going to help Chance gain some helpful tips on the best practices of fish farming that can help him reach his 1.8 tons of harvest target. Okay, Helen, we're at Chance's Pond. Now, tell us, what are we about to do? Okay, here we are now. We want to test the water quality to mm. see if the water is okay for the fish. Mm. Yes, we are going to test using this search disc. Why do you think um, it's very important to carry out this activity in relation to the growth of uh, fish? Okay, this is very important for the farmer to, mm. to see how the level of the fertilization in his pond for the growth of the fish. Because mm. okay. sometimes we maintain to over fertilize the pond which may suffocate mm. the fish. Mm. There you have some problems. Again, sometimes we tend not to fertilize the pond and the, and the fish won't grow to that okay. standard that you need. So it's important that you balance your fertilization in your pond. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now let's try to test and see the level of the fertilization in this pond. Mm -hmm. Pond fertilization is when we use natural or inorganic fertilizers to increase the presence of organisms called phytoplankton. Phytoplanktons are plants or algae. They are natural food for fish. They make water in a pond appear green. Fish ponds need the right amount of plankton to be healthy. Too little or too much is bad for water quality, fish health and growth. To measure the level of fertilization in a pond, a circuit disc is to be used. A circuit disc is a 20 centimeter circle made from wood, plastic or a metal disc. It is divided into four parts that are painted white and black. Helen's circuit disc is made of metal and is attached to rope. The rope is painted white at spaces of 10 centimeters apart. Lower the circuit disc into the water until the disc is no longer visible from the pond surface. When the disc is no longer visible, it has reached what is called the circuit disc depth. Read the length of the rope at the circuit depth to record the results. It has disappeared more than we expected even. Mm. So this means that the pond is over fertilized. So over fertilized means there is what? What is in the there pond? There is a lot of plankton and zooplankton in it. What's causing that fertilization? Okay, those are small uh, microorganisms that grow within the water. Mm. They are naturally there. So mm. the more you feed, they develop quickly mm. at a faster pace. The more you That's feed the, the fish. Is. Yes, because ah. yeah, they, they grow from the favorable environment. Okay. The sun, water and other things because okay. they are already in water. Okay, so Ellen, uh, you mentioned of zooplankton and phytoplankton as animal and plants. So are they visible to human sight? No, you can't see them. They are microscopic things. You can't see them with mm. naked eyes. Okay. Yes. Mm. Okay, so... Um, now we've tested on this corner and yes we saw that it's a bit over fertilized but what about can we only test in one spot what about in the middle maybe in the middle it's not that fertilized okay. is there a way of seeing yeah you can't just get the accurate leading from one point taking the measurements from different parts of the pond is important so that your test for fertilization is correct if a pond is too fertile it will lead to lack of oxygen in the pond leading to the death of fish. Another way that a farmer can also check levels is by using your hand. With your palm facing upwards, dip your hand into the pond until your fingers are no longer visible. If your fingers are no longer visible before your elbow in the water, then your pond is over fertilized. The noise that I've got uh, was of great benefit. As she mentioned on, uh, on water quality, the overfertilized pond affecting or reducing the amount of oxygen in the pond. That will really help to have a good yield by the end of the day. Yes. Makes sense? Let's break it down. It is important to make sure that the level of fertilization in your pond is kept at the right amount. Controlling the amount of plankton in a pond is one of the most important management tasks for a farmer. A circuit disc is used to measure the amount of plankton in a pond. You can also use your hand by dipping it into the pond. When a pond is not fertile, you can correct this by applying fertilizers, 
before filling the pond with water. The most common example of organic fertilizer is animal manure. When a pond is too fertile, a farmer must stop adding manure and add fresh water to the pond. This is done by bringing fresh water into the pond through the inlet and allowing over fertile water to run out through the outlet. Regular monitoring and testing by the farmer will ensure that fertilization is kept in control. This will ensure an environment that is healthy for the rearing of your fish. Predators such as birds can be dealt with by placing nets over your fish ponds. As you have seen dear farmers, good management of your ponds and the water quality will ensure that you have good quality fish at the end of your harvest and reduce on your mortality rates. Chansa has mentioned that one of his challenges is the price and availability of fish feed. He previously traveled long distances to buy feed at high prices. We found a solution that is closer than he realizes. Mubanga Seketani from Adsec Enterprises has something for Chansa that is sure to be a game changer. Adsec Enterprises is um, involved in provision of good quality fish feed. Right. So we are supplying it to our small holder farmers okay. so that it can promote their productivity and ultimately improve their income. So being the reliable partner that you are when it comes to supporting fish farmers like Chansa here, how are you offering uh, us the best uh, quality feeds that uh, we get access to? Fish feed is not readily available in our right. area. So um, we want to make it readily available and accessible right. to our farmers. Mm -hmm. What is the range of fish feeds that you offer here at Adsec? Oh, we have all, all stages of, of the fish. Right. Starting from the fry, mm -hmm. coming to juvenile one millimeter, it goes to juvenile two millimeters, it goes to pre-starter, the starter, it goes to the grower, and finally the finisher itself. So um, when you now have provided the feed, like you said, you're trying to provide more services to enable the farmer to gain more knowledge. What exactly is it that you're doing in terms of adding value and giving support? So first of all, when a customer comes, we interview them right. to try to find out at what stage their fish is. Mm -hmm. And then we give recommendations as to what kind of feed they should buy at what stage. Of course. Then later on, we have extension services. Right. Yeah. So we have uh, technical officers who are responsible for visiting our farmers. Fantastic. And then they'll be able to provide extension service right at the farm. So the extension services that you are offering, are you doing, are you doing them for free or? Someone has to pay something. You should good be excited question. that it's for free. It's wow. for free, yes. No, that's good. Fantastic. So that is, a, that is an incentive that we have for our farmers. Fantastic. Yeah. Makes sense? Let's break it down to the details. Adsec Enterprises has been funded by ICRA to expand their operations within Wapula province. Through their extension services, aimed at helping farmers in improving their skills in management practices, Adsec Enterprises will help farmers like Chansa to be better skilled and have a constant supply of commercial fish feed. Today, we are in Wapula province and we're visiting Chansa Mutuna. So far, we've looked at how a farmer can get a bumper harvest through the use of good aquaculture practices. And we've seen how giving your fish nutritious feed will increase your sales. Now, it's time to look at the market in relation to your fish's size and what that means for market. Also, how a farmer can access different markets. We've heard time and time again of how farmers get cheated out of fair prices. Where can they go to get a better deal? Unimos Investment Limited are off-takers. Collins Chongo will help Chansa see the benefit of having them as important partners that will help him secure a market for his fish. What is an off-taker? 
it is by the, the, the fish from these farmers. Uh, we have the market mm -hmm. where we are taking the fish. I really want you to explain to Chansa and I what the benefits are, quite simply, you know, of working with an off-taker such as yourselves. The benefits, number one, Chansa will stop looking at fish to be fish. Mm -hmm. He'll be looking at fish as money. Right. Because he has the market already. Mm -hmm. All he needs is to grow the fish. So that mm. is money. He will have cut on expenditure, other expenses are necessary in terms of transport. Mm. We ourselves will drive to Mwansa's farm, right. watch him harvest, help him harvest, measure the fish right there, and he's given cash, and the fish is put in, the, in our truck. Fantastic. Off it goes. So that is, that is his benefit. Mr. Chungo, how do you go about uh, negotiating with the prices? When it comes to buying fish from um, the farmers? Normally, we, we, we set the, the price okay. which we, we give as an offer okay. for them to take it before. In a situation whereby what you have on paper, like when I call you, the amount that you are buying my fish on, and also my set amount that, like, that I've calculated in order for me to have maximum profit differs. Are there further negotiations that happen so that I don't go much into the profit? What is trending on the market is actually what is going to be followed. So in this case, you, you may want to negotiate further in terms of good prices, yes. but what is coming to that? Is it the higher cost of feed? Mm -hmm. Last time you saw this, the feed was at this price and it has maintained mm. the same price yes. and now you want the price to go up so that because even to our supermarkets we need to justify mm -hmm. why we are increasing yes. the price so in this case the trains like the fuel has gone up okay fuel has gone up it means that the transport cost so which means we will need to calculate the percentage of the hike in terms of uh, mm. the, the price. Finding market is one thing that is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even as much as we've tried to scout for market, some people may promise, but after some time, they may change their minds again. Right. Yeah. So finding people who are like people you can depend on exactly. is a very good thing. Exactly. In business, yes. Yeah. Partners, you can, dependable partners. Exactly. Yes. Makes sense? Let's break it down to the details. Off-takers are people or companies whose business is to find markets on behalf of farmers and help them sell their produce at an agreed price. They are in contract with farmers over a set time. Working with off-takers lessens your challenge of looking for markets, leaving you the farmer to focus only on the rearing of your fish. Most off-takers will come collect the fish from the farmer, meaning the cost and logistics of transporting your harvest is no longer your burden. The off-takers will ensure that a farmer has a constant market to supply. Um, having an off-taker is something that is great. Yeah, and I would love to work hand in hand with you in most. It's time, starting from now, starting from the first service, <laughs> going forward, yeah. <laughs> As the weeks go by, your fingerlings will be growing and it's important to know at what size your fish will be ready to go to market. Out of the office and into the field, we had earlier met Colin Strongo from Unimos. Apart from being off-takers, Unimos are involved in the growing out of tilapia fish. Now Collins will speak to Chansa on what it takes to get your fingerlings to a size that will get a good price. Okay Collins, how do you know that this fish is actually table size? Is it the weight? Is it the size? What do you follow? Okay, we have two methods. Number okay. one, I'll show you this one. Okay. Yes, this one, you can see there is fish there. Right. So this fish has grams. So okay. normally, when we are stocking fingerlings, mm -hmm. they, are, uh, they are 10 grams. Okay. Yes, so from 10 grams, which we can see from here, mm -hmm. 10 grams, it goes up to 20 grams, mm -hmm. 50 grams, mm -hmm. 80 grams, 100 grams, 150, 200, and then 
to 300 grams. Uh, some farmers, they may not afford to buy a digital scale. So in this case, we provide them with this chart. Oh, and okay. they just need to sample the fish and place it here. Okay. So if it, it is here, then it is less than 10 grams. Mm. And this, it, it means that it goes by also the length. The here length, we have yes. the length. The length, uh -huh. it is about 25 the centimeters okay. then that means that it is uh, 300 grams okay. so it's well, just, just just to cut you short mr chong uh, so you've mentioned of um, this being a priority in, in in a case where you don't have uh, a digital scale mm. yes yes so does this apply to all the species under tilapia yes all the species under tilapia mm -hmm. okay. you can use it mm -hmm. except right. the catfish okay, okay. yes okay. Okay, so when it reaches the last one, then it's 300 grams, and if it's bigger, it's good. It's bigger, it's good, it okay. can even go beyond 300 grams. Okay, what's the biggest size a tilapia can grow, especially like in a fish pond arrangement like this? It goes up to one kilo. Really? Yes. Ah, that's interesting. Have you had one kilo of tilapias from here? Yes. Wow, Mr. Collins, this is all very interesting. I would really, really, really love to test this theory about the measurements. Is it okay that we get into your pond and get a fish from here and uh, test it against your measurements here? Oh, great. That's fine. Okay. I was hoping I was the one going to fish, but it's okay. Okay, so this is 100 grams, looking at this. 100 or 150, which one are we going with? This one, 100. Where, where the two is ending, yeah? 100. Makes sense? Let's break it down. A fish farmer can sell their fish at different times during the farming season. Carrying out the exercise of measuring and weighing will enable a farmer to know what size their fish have grown to. You can use a weighing scale or a chart to determine the weight of your fish. The fish's weight and length will determine the price it sells for. Mr. Collins, thank you very much for taking your time to educate us on these matters. Sure, thanks a lot, Mr. Collins, for having us here. Thank you very much. Make sure that you grow the fish according to this. So follow all the best management practices. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, I'll do that. Great. Thank and thank you. you very much to the team behind. <laughs> uh, currently, I'm doing um, both uh, growth and fingering production. But my very interest in fish farming is uh, seed production. Two or three years from now, I would love to have my own nature and be one of uh, the biggest producers of seed. Chansa, we'd like to just really thank you for honoring us by allowing us to visit your fish farm and really to see the hard work that you as a young person are really engaged in is so encouraging and so uplifting. Right, Cozy? Absolutely, Chansa. A big mm. congratulations to you. Hello. I'm extremely inspired, as Kachanana has said. Right. And so many viewers and farmers across the country mm -hmm. will be very inspired by you. Unfortunately, we can't stay here forever, can we, Cozy? Well, it's come to that time that we must say see you later, because mm. it's never really goodbye. So join us next week on another episode of Munda Makeover! Makeover. Thank you.